Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bag Lady Studio. Today I have an awesome little hack video. This is going to be the Purse Pal by Lynn's Handmade. And oh my gosh, there are so many different ways you can make this. I can't wait to show you some of the ways I've come up with it. I'm not going to show you the entire pattern, but you do need to go ahead and purchase that pattern. I'll put a link down below or up here. I don't know where it's going to show up, but I'll have a link for the pattern. Um, there's lots of different videos also on how to do this. I've got a couple tricks I've come up with that I hope you enjoy. As you can tell, I am now in the cargo van conversion studio and the air conditioner is running. We have a heat index of 107. So I'm going to try to talk loud. I may end up overdubbing some of this. Um, so excuse the AC noise, but if not, I would literally be melting. If you get anything out of this video, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I have a lot more planned and I'd love to see you join in. Let me know if you have a favorite hack that you use for this purse pal. I'd love to know. I mean, we can all share and learn from each other. Also, this purse pal is going to be given away. So one week from today, I will do a comment thing where it picks a comment from this video and whoever is that commenter will get this Purse Pal free with shipping in the United States. So please go ahead, subscribe, hit that like button, leave me a comment and maybe get a free Purse Pal. Here are the, some of the things that you're going to need for this video or to make this Purse Pal. Um, I'm using some beacon three-in-one, glue stick, scissors, a pen, my rotary cutter, a smaller rotary color cutter, um, some double-sided tape, my favorite ruler of all time, of course clips and iron, I have my mat, and the pattern and your fabric. Here is a few of them that I have done in order to try to figure out the best ways for me to do it. This was the first one I did with the fabric. I made a fabric tab on here with a plastic snap, and then it's got the zipper here. Place for you to put your dollar bills. And then here is your card slots. Inside is change, a little change spot. The second one I did very similar. You see that? And then this is the third one I did. And I really like this one the best because I like that it has a magnetic snap. I'm not a big fan of the plastic snaps and it covers up the cards completely. So there's a couple couple different things I'm gonna do. I also used, I can do it with one hand here. You probably can't see if there's heat transfer vinyl in there. It's a shame you can't see it. It's like a holographic, it's really cool. So those are some of the hacks that I'm going to show you how to do. In fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a magnetic snap where the bill area is too, just to keep it secure. Um, you can also add a wristlet to it. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I will show you where you could do that at. I have already started and gotten my stuff together, so I have a just a number three zipper. This is my fabric that I'm using. This is actually going to be for the part that covers up the card slots. And I have that quilt cotton interface with SF101. There's my pattern. There is the heat transfer vinyl. Isn't that cool looking? This is going to be my card slot one. And one tip that I have, and I'll see if I can bring this in and show you up closer, is I went ahead and put a grid mark on the back of that. I transferred the card slot area. I measured it out. And then I transferred those measurements here to make it a little bit easier for me to draw the lines. Because that was always an issue I had was getting those knot lines nice and straight and in the right spot and starting and stopping where they needed to be. So this was one way that I was able to do that. And maybe that tip will help you a little bit. As you can see, my pattern's a little abused. 
I need to go ahead and put it on some plastic, but trying to cut through that pattern, I was always cutting the paper and it just never was lining up. So we'll see, hopefully this will make it better. And then my next piece is going to be my Decoville light and I went ahead and I transferred the spot out. I will cut that out with a knife. And then this is my outer fabric and I do not have that interface with anything. I cut it one inch larger than the pattern and if it's a directional print also make sure you have it facing the correct direction. This is going to be facing like this. So the words will be facing up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fuse the Decoville light to my fabric. Again, make sure you have everything facing the right way. I went ahead and cut out my square. That's where my zipper will be. All right, I find when I fuse the Decoville light, I like to use steam. I get it started on this side, then I flip it over and then I fuse it the rest from the other side and then I let it cool down. Now that I have fused that, I'm gonna go ahead and use my glue stick. You can see it turns purple until it dries. And I'm gonna glue down all four sides and then those corners I will trim a little slit in each side here and then bring those forward and glue that down. So for that step, you can either use the glue stick, you can also use tape or you can use some of that beacon, whatever is easier for you. I use the glue stick, it tends to be pretty easy. Once I get all my, my edges down, I go ahead and put the hot iron on it and that just kind of seals that glue for me. This is what it looks like right now. So that's the part that's gonna be on the front and then there's the back and then you can see my little peekaboo zipper hole. I'm now gonna use my heat transfer vinyl. I'm just gonna lay that right on top of it. Fuse it per your instructions, mine say hot iron, press 10 to 15 seconds, don't slide your iron around, and then let it cool completely before you peel off of that paper. I've placed it down, I'm gonna cover it with a, a piece of cloth, or if you have a Teflon sheet, cover that up. But as you can see, this covers up all those raw edges and seals it all up for you. The film I use is a little tricky to try to get off, and I think each brand is probably a little bit different. Again, mine is, you have to remove it when it's cool. So it's fused now, I'm gonna let it cool down and then I'll remove it and then I'll show you the next step. So this peeled off really pretty good. I like to usually flip it back over and I'll run the iron over the other side just to make sure. But yeah, it, it actually did pretty good. I just love how when you change it, move it, it changes colors. So now is the time to cut in the slit where um, I will be folding the fabric back in order to put the zipper in. So I'm going to use my template and I'm going to lay it on top of it. Of course, I'll make sure everything's lined up and then I'm just going to cut my straight line and then afterwards I'll use my scissors and cut these two V's. Alright, I've went ahead and I've cut my slit and I've cut my V's and because I had cut the window out with the Decoville light, it was very easy for me to feel the edge and make sure that goes right up to that V. Now I'm going to use the glue stick and I'm going to glue all of these seams backwards. I'll show you what that looks like once it's done. There's my square. So my next step is going to be inserting the zipper. So this is a regular pre-made zipper. I bought a bunch of these by accident and this is a great use for them. I don't have to worry about the starts and the stops because that's gonna actually get cut off. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is flip this over and I'm gonna put a really thin, so I believe it's a quarter inch of double-sided tape on each side here. And then I will center my zipper, make sure the pull is in there facing the direction you want it to face. So now that my zipper is placed, I'm gonna go ahead and do a top stitch and close this box up and you will catch that zipper on the other side. Okay, the zipper is installed and I went ahead and I trimmed it off of the back. The next step is going to be to put a snap in so that way I can seal up this, this bag. 
So I did that by using the washer. I found the middle and then I went down one inch from the zipper. Made my marks. Now I'm going to cut through and I will back this snap with another piece of Decoville. So now I've installed the female end of that snap. I will fold this in half and I will go ahead and glue all sides. So you can, uh, I do have the Decaville, as you can see it. So I guess if you want it hidden, you should, you could do that snap before you put down the heat transfer vinyl. But honestly, that doesn't bother me and it makes me feel much more secure knowing that that compartment would be closed, especially if I decided to add a wristlet strap. Okay, so I have it all clipped, it's glued, and I just discovered I made a boo-boo because this is the side that's going to be covered with the card slots and the text is facing the right way, but on the other side, it's gonna be upside down. But it is what it is, so pay attention to that. I thought I was, but I guess I wasn't. Oh well, I'm sure it's going to be loved anyway. We all make mistakes, and I've made a few of these, and I've made a mistake, but it's okay. We're just going to go with it. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to... So now I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to cut out those slots that I showed you. I made that grid. I'm going to cut those slots, and I'm going to go ahead and make the, the card slot for that. Um, I'm not going to show you that whole step. It's very easy in the instructions that when you buy the pattern, it's very, very, it's a very, very easy step. You just need some double-sided tape and about a two and a half by 40 inch long strip of very thin material. I have some muslin that I'm going to use. I'll show you it once it's done. And also, don't forget, you have to add that snap. So I held mine up to the other one and I marked where that snap is going to go and I'm going to go ahead and put that snap in now and again I'll back that with a little bit of Decoville Heavy. Okay so I got all my card slots done. It's very easy. So if this is the part that scares you, get the pattern and read it. It is so clear and it really is not a big deal. It's just taping and folding. It's repetitive measuring. Once you do the first two rows it's pretty easy. On the other side, I stitched my lines for my card slots and then I added my other corresponding snap pieces. I will seal this together with some glue in a few moments, but next I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my tab. And for this, I'm gonna sew down right sides together, all three sides. Sorry, my hand's right there in the way. I will sew down all three sides and then flip it. So I went ahead and I flipped it after I sewed it. I flipped it, I top stitched it, closed it up, and I added my snap before I did that. So the snap will be hidden on that side, but you'll see it on that. Went ahead and added my bag tag in here so it's kind of hidden inside the bag, so it's not right there in your face. But I wanted to go ahead and add it. There's lots of places you could add it. So the next step is going to be to glue like I did the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these seams together. And then I'm also gonna slip this tag also in here, or the tab also in there. I'll snap it all up just like that so it meets. There we go. And I will fold that in up here and it'll be nice and hidden and secure. Okay, so it is all done and it actually came out really, really good. I think you're gonna like these hacks. So when I finished it up, I went ahead and pieced together the pieces just kind of how the pattern says to do it. I stitched around it, everything came out beautiful. I'm gonna show it to you and again, if you want this, what did I say in the beginning? You have to go ahead and leave a comment for us. Make sure you're subscribed. Go ahead and do a like, because you know, YouTube likes it and so do I. And um, if you feel so inclined, share this if you found this video useful. Stay tuned for more, and I'm gonna give you a couple little pictures of how this turned out. Thanks again, and y'all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.
and I forgot something. If you were gonna add a wristlet strap, you could put a grommet in the corner of it and make just a simple little wristlet strap, or you could even make a strap and attach it to one of those corners. Either way would be a great way to do it. Almost forgot. Again, y'all have a great day.